What is going on everybody? My name is Kyle. I'm with High Point Scientific and today we're going to be talking about how to photograph a lunar eclipse. Now there's a lunar eclipse coming up on the morning of November 19th, 2021. And hopefully this video will be uploaded by the time that lunar eclipse actually occurs, but we'll be actually live streaming the lunar eclipse at 2 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. But this video is going to be a general overview of how you can photograph a total or partial lunar eclipse. We'll be going over some of the different tips and tricks that I've learned from calculating the correct exposure to using proper software to be able to automate your eclipse photography, as well as some simple post-processing of your photographs of a total lunar eclipse with a DSLR camera. So let's talk a little bit about what a lunar eclipse actually is. A lunar eclipse simply occurs when the moon passes behind the Earth's umbra or shadow. This only happens a few times a year. The reason it doesn't happen every full moon is because the moon's orbit is inclined roughly five degrees to the ecliptic. Eclipses generally happen in seasons. The November 19th lunar eclipse will be followed by a solar eclipse in December. However, that will only be visible to those in the South Pole. It is also worth mentioning that the lunar eclipse on November 19th will only be a partial eclipse, thus won't go completely into the Earth's shadow. However, it is incredibly close to totality that you might hardly notice the difference. A lunar eclipse occurs in stages. The eclipse begins when the moon first touches the Earth's shadow, also known as C1 or contact 1. The eclipse reaches what's called totality, or C2, about an hour later. During this process, you'll see the moon gradually appear to diminish in the sky as the eclipsed portions begin to turn red. You'll also notice more stars appearing in the sky, and from personal experience, I can tell you that is spectacular to see. C3, or contact 3, represents the end of the total eclipse phase, where the moon will gradually again to appear in the sky. Now, the first thing we need to figure out while photographing a lunar eclipse is what exactly the right exposure is to be able to capture the lunar eclipse. Now, if you've ever photographed the moon, you might have tried to take an exposure of the moon only to discover the image was completely blown out. We want to avoid that during the partial phases of the eclipse. We want to be able to capture all of the detail on the moon as it begins to gradually go behind the Earth's shadow. And a fantastic tool is Shutter Speed Calculator for Lunar Eclipses. It is a fantastic resource, strongly recommend it. I'll have a link to it in the description below, but it will help you calculate the precise exposure you need for your camera for each phase of the eclipse. So we'll go over here and we'll go up to altitude of the moon and then we'll adjust that accordingly. I believe if I'm not mistaken on the eastern east coast that the altitude of the moon during the lunar eclipse is 50 degrees, somewhere around there. Elevation of the observer, I'm gonna leave it at zero because I live in Florida and basically at sea level. And then we're gonna click full moon. Now we're going to set the ISO at about 100. I like to keep it around 100 or 200 because I don't like there to be a lot of noise in my image. And then we're going to set the lens aperture from F8 to F5 because my telescope that I'm going to be using to photograph the eclipse is an F5. I'm also using a full frame, D full frame DSLR. And as you can see, it says the suggested shutter speed is about one one thousandth of a second. So that's great to know. That tells me that I can set my shutter to exactly this value and expect there to be a good, uh, well-exposed shot of the moon. But as we go into the first phase of the partial eclipse, we can see that begins to change. You can see a little bit here of the moon has been cut out from the Earth's shadow. And as we reach a 30% eclipse, you can see the suggested shutter speed has gone from one 500th a second to one 250th of a second, and so on and so forth up to totality. So this is the suggested shutter speed that this tool tells me to use for a total lunar eclipse. It says to use about a two second exposure. And this is absolutely great to know because we can use this and we can be able to already know what shutter speed is necessary to be able to calculate 
a good shot well exposed of the moon. So when you're watching an eclipse, especially if it's your very first time, you don't want to be sitting here behind your camera lens trying to figure out the right settings. You want to be able to use this tool to be able to tell you what settings you can use. So the next step in photographing a lunar eclipse is actually using the software to be able to create a loop of exposures for the eclipse. Now, keep in mind, we already have calculated the right exposures to take for the lunar eclipse. So the reason we want to be making a script is that your entire eclipse session is automated so that you can photograph the entire eclipse. With a script, you won't have to worry about adjusting your camera settings and you can enjoy the eclipse with your own eyes. And Digicam Control is a fantastic piece of free software that will control your Nikon or Canon, and I believe Sony as well, DSLR, with a simple USB cable. So it is fantastic, free, and I believe open source and a great piece of software to use for your astrophotography. But the reason we want to be using for using Digicam Control, excuse me, today is because of its ability to create scripts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to File and then go over to Plugins. And then I'm going to go down to Tools and then click Script Execution. So what I've created here is a script based on the values that I created using that shutter speed calculator tool from just a moment ago. And you can see what I've done here is I've created two different loops, uh, each with an ISO of 100. And for the partial phase, I have the value set at 1 500th of a second. And I have a loop count of 12 with a wait time between each exposure of 300 seconds. So this means this should be roughly an hour worth of exposures, which is roughly the time it takes for a partial lunar eclipse to enter the total phase or contact two. And then I have a second loop here for just a, the totality itself, again, a two second exposure, a loop count of 12 with a wait time of 300 seconds between each shot. So that is about an hour's worth of exposures. And this is just a very, 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 very simple script. This is just to show you that you can use this tool based on the values you calculated previously, but there's a lot more you can do here. Um, this probably wouldn't be what I actually use. I'd probably want to have more shots than this. I'd probably want to have 24 shots per loop or even 60 shots per loop if I want to make a time lapse of it. But as you can see, this is pretty easy. It's pretty straightforward and I have found in the past this works very well for eclipses and I'll actually drop this script into the description below via a Google Drive link. That way you guys can actually go ahead and make your own scripts based on this. So the next part of our video, we're going to talk about the actual post-processing part of photographing a lunar eclipse. Now this is a shot I took of the total lunar eclipse that was visible over the United States on January 20th, 2019. And this is already a fantastic looking image. And again, I was able to take this image by using that shutter control that I showed you earlier uh, via Digicam control, where I was able to automate my eclipse photography via a script. And I was able to calculate the exposure using that shutter exposure tool we mentioned at the very beginning of the video. And again, this is a really good image. Like if you were to stop here, this would be perfectly cool. But we're going to do some very light processing here, nothing too serious in Photoshop. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to the crop tool and we're just going to crop it in just a little bit. I like it when my images of the eclipse fill up the entire frame. Then we're going to go up to filter and then we're going to click the camera raw filter. And what the camera raw filter is going to do, it do some basic editing like adjust the exposure a little bit as we can bring out more of those deep reds in the lunar surface from the eclipse. We're going to adjust the contrast a little bit as well. Let's see if the highlights, drop the highlights down a little bit. We can leave the shadows alone. We can leave the whites alone. We can leave the blacks alone. We can go down to texture and we can actually sharpen this a little bit as well as adjust the clarity as well as the saturation. Don't all got too much because if you make it too red, it doesn't look too realistic. So then once that's done, we're gonna click OK. And this is what I consider to be a final image. This is something that looks really good and is well exposed, again, using that shutter tool 
to be able to automate your eclipse photography as well as the uh, exposure calculator at the beginning of the video. And this is really good. This is something I'm super proud of. And if you got something like this, I'm sure this would be something you'd be proud of too. Thank you guys so much for watching our latest tutorial on how to photograph a lunar eclipse. This is not the only way you can approach processing a photograph of a lunar eclipse or even capturing a lunar eclipse. I actually forgot to mention during the video that Mac OS users are at a distinct advantage here because there's a software that's completely free known as Lunar Eclipse Maestro that is available for anybody with a Mac computer. And what that will actually do is it'll do everything from calculating the exposure time to automating your eclipse photography to actually controlling your DSLR and things like that. So it is an incredibly free resource for anybody with a Mac and you have a Windows PC, then the method I showed you is also, also perfectly fine. But again, we'll be live streaming the Lunar Eclipse this Friday morning beginning at 2 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and I'll be your host for that live stream. But until then, my name is Kyle, and always remember to keep looking up.